Ukraine's second largest city of Haki, with a population of around 1.4 million, has been at the center of Russia's military aggression this week. Now on Tuesday, the city came under heavy missile strikes. In the aftermath of the bombardments, Kharkiv's residents helped emergency service workers take dead bodies out of the damaged buildings. Dead bodies were seen on the streets. Eyewitness videos showed wrecked buildings with no windows, fallen trees, power lines. The head of the local hospital said that many children were also injured. The hospital, which also serves as the bomb shelter, was damaged in the shockwave. Вон попадание вот туда вот завод взрывной волной вынесло все к е... все к чертовой матери. Вот все, что я могу сказать. Есть раненые, тяжело раненые из этих тяжело раненых есть двое детей, которых отвезли в больницу. Но персонал, местное население общими усилиями мы все это сделали. Missiles struck the very heart of the city in the Freedom Square, just outside the regional administration offices of Kharkiv. Video footage showed a missile hitting the local government building and then exploding, causing a massive fireball. <laughs> At least 10 people were killed, 35 wounded in the strikes. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky accused Russia of war crimes for bombing the city. Shelling into the central square is blatant, unconcealed terror. No one will forgive. No one will forget. The strike against Kharkiv is a war crime. This is state terrorism on the part of Russia. After this, Russia is obviously a terrorist state and it must be official. The regional head of Kharkiv said on Tuesday that the city's defense was holding despite Russia launching cruise missiles against the city. In the city of Zitomir, located in the northern Ukraine, four people were killed when residential homes and residential buildings here were hit by Russian cruise missiles which were reportedly aimed at a nearby air base. And now for more on this, we are being joined by David Marples, who is a professor and a specialist in history and contemporary politics of Belarus and Ukraine. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, there have been numerous civilian infrastructure and residential areas that have been attacked by the Russian forces, even though Russia had claimed that their target was only military bases and infrastructure. What do you think of this? I think the war has begun to escalate. And I think it's begun to escalate because Russia has not achieved its targets as quickly as it, it intended to do. And Putin is getting rather frustrated by a number of things. I think he's frustrated by the resistance put up by the Ukrainians, the fact that most of the world is unified against Russia and condemn this attack, mm. and also the sanctions that have been imposed have already hit Russia quite hard uh, in terms of the collapse of the, of the currency, um, the closure of the stock market, people emptying their bank accounts, and this is after just a week of a war that I think Putin expected to win in two or three days. Mm. And therefore, he's stepping up and hit more civilian targets. And I think we can expect more missiles in the days ahead. All right. Now, you're right. Absolutely. The Ukrainian resistance has proven to be stronger and more resilient than what was expected. Now, how long do you think Ukraine will be able to hold off Russian forces? Allies are sending in more military aid. Do you think these will be able to help Ukrainian forces and the people that have now taken up arms? Yeah, it's all a question of timing, whether whether Russia is in a position to capture the major cities such as Kiev before this aid arrives. But certainly, I think Ukrainians uh, outside the military as well, even civilians are taking part in this war and making Molotov cocktails. Everybody seems to be unified and doing their bid against the invader. And you have a president, Zelensky, who you just showed on your screens there. His popularity was about 28 percent a couple of weeks ago. Now it's 90 percent and the entire country is behind him. So I think it will be more and more difficult for Russia to meet its targets. And even if it occupies the capital, uh, what will it do then? Will it simply imprison uh, or kill the leaders of, of Ukraine? Right. And what kind of state will it try to impose? I mean, none of these things are very clear yet. Absolutely. And Russia, uh, I don't think, is, is going to have a very easy time with this war. Right. Now, yesterday we also saw that he rejected President Zelensky's request of immediate membership. What do you make of this decision? 
I don't think it was expected from the EU that they would give immediate membership. Um, they've never done that. They offered Ukraine associate membership about nine years ago. But Ukraine is not quite yet in a position to join the EU, regardless of the war situation. Uh, their factories were very old. Some of the equipment was outdated. Mm. There's a lot of corruption in Ukrainian society. Now, usually the criteria for entering the UN are for a more democratic environment, a more free environment than Ukraine had up to the start of this war. So if it was accepted now, it would simply be out of sympathy. It wouldn't be for the usual reasons. But I do think in the long term, uh, maybe even sort of one to five years, if this war ends, Ukraine would have a chance of very early membership of the European Union. All right. Now, President Joe Biden was to make Vladimir Putin pay the price for Russia's invasion of Ukraine in his State of the Union address. Now, what form of aid can we expect from the United States and the West going forward? I think the aid will be to the Ukrainian government in terms of loans and, and funds. Also, uh, lethal weapons, which have come from a number, number of countries already to Ukraine. Ukraine will be well equipped. It will be well armed and it will be well supported. But the line will be drawn, I think, at direct intervention. At the moment, I cannot see that forces that are from NATO would enter Ukraine to take part directly in a war. It could happen, say, on a volunteer basis, that people who are not in the military from different countries could go to Ukraine to fight on the Ukrainian side. But I think there is a limitation to what the Europeans and Americans will do in terms of direct intervention. And the reason being, of course, that Putin has threatened to use extreme force mm by which he seemed to imply nuclear weapons if there was an intervention by NATO in this conflict. All right. Professor David Marple, thank you so much for joining us with your assessment of this situation. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.